So homemade cookie day is coming up on October 1st and I thought it would be super fun to make these cute little handmade macaroon zipper pouches. I'm gonna show you how to do it. All right, so this is a little bit different from our usual tutorial. Today, we're going to be doing a lot of hand stitching. So I know for some of you, that's a bit of a dirty word, but don't be afraid. This is the perfect little project to take along with you if you're going on a long car ride, or if you're traveling, or just sitting down uh, watching a show. It's really quite quick and easy. So I recommend you pick up this mini macaroon pouch pattern. It's by Sweet Shop Sewing. And in the pattern, you will have the supplies to make one little zipper pouch. So that means you're going to get the zipper that you need, two of these little metal discs, as well as the sizes that you'll need to cut out of both your fabric and your different interfacings. So I'm just using scrap um, charm packs that I had lying around, some solids. So grab some of those, but for the outside, you're gonna wanna make sure that you have uh, enough to make two matching outside circles. And so you will need two five inch squares to get that. I also have some fusible fleece, some lightweight interfacing for the inside, and I also have some 28 weight thread so that it's nice and sturdy for our hand stitching. So let's get started. All right, so first up, I want to give some props to uh, our pattern writers here. This is a fabulously written pattern and there are so many pictures to follow along with. So you will know exactly what to do. If, you, if I miss something along the way, just be sure to look at the photos in here because they've done a fabulous job. So first up, we're going to grab two of our matching five inch squares. These are gonna be the outside of my little zipper pouch. So be sure to choose a color that you love. And I have gone ahead and um, made a copy and cut out the two different sizes that are in the pattern, the larger one for the outside and the smaller for the inside. And so let's just line these up and I'm gonna lay my larger circle on here. They're shifting a bit on me. And then I'm just gonna grab a micron pin or whatever marking pin you want to use. And we are gonna trace this around, around our little paper. And it doesn't have to be exact, but they've done all the math for you to know what size you need this to be. And so I've put this along the edge because I do wanna point out that you can get both your large outer circle and your small inner circle on one five inch square. You can see how it'll fit there. I wanted to do a contrasting color. So I went ahead and just put this on a different one. You can see I've used green here, um, but it's the same concept. You're just gonna trace those and then you would get both your inside and outside out of two five inch squares. So now that we have this ready, let's just grab our scissors and we're just gonna cut around. I have both of my layers stacked together. So I'm gonna get two circles at once and then we'll just gently cut on that line that we drew. Every once in a while, we just need a project that forces us to slow down and enjoy the process. So we'll just trim that right up just like so, and we have those two ready to go. So from that fusible fleece, you're going to cut two of that same larger circle size that we cut from our outside fabric, and then we'll set that aside. I have my two cut out and ready to go here. Then you're gonna grab that lightweight fusible. I have that. And what you're gonna do for this is you're actually gonna trace your little discs. So this is your template for that um, interior uh, coverage that you're looking for. And then we're just gonna trace this. In the pattern, it calls for two, one for each side of the lining. I actually doubled that up. So I traced this four times. I found that extra little bit of layer just gave me some stability that I really liked in the end result. And so let's go ahead and set this aside because I have those ready to go. So you can see, here's my little circles. I just traced the uh, metal discs that come in your kit and I have my lining piece. You'll notice that it's a little bit smaller than those outside circles. 
And so now let's just go ahead and prep everything and get it ready to go. All right, so we're gonna take that fusible fleece that we cut out and our outside pieces. And if you've never used fusible fleece before, there's going to be one side that's kind of rough and bumpy, that's where the glue is, and one side that is just the smooth fleece. So in this instance, we're gonna put the bumpy side up and you're gonna place that against the wrong side of your fabric. Because this is solids, there's not really a right or a wrong side. You can use a pressing cloth here if you're worried about getting anything on your iron. I'm just going to eyeball it and I feel pretty good about this. I'll be careful. And then we're just going to use a hot iron and press this down just like so. And you can see that just adheres to that. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. So again, bumpy side up and we're going to put our fabric right along there and give it a good press. There we go. And so those two are ready to go. I'm gonna set them aside for now and we can prep our lining pieces. So for this, we are going to line up that little piece of interfacing that we cut. And I just kind of eyeball and center it there on the fabric. And so we'll just have that ready to go and I'll press one. Again, this has kind of a bumpy side, which is the glue. And this is going down towards the fabric, not up towards the iron. And so I'll go ahead and add that second layer and fuse that in place as well. All right, so once we have all of these fused and ready to go, both the outsides and our two lining pieces, I'm just gonna set these aside and now we can prep our zipper. So we're gonna take our six inch zipper that came in the kit and I like to move this little zipper head kind of out of the way. And we're gonna fold this in half right sides together and line up where those zipper stops meet and just pinch it together and we're gonna take this to the machine and sew a straight stitch across there and then I'll show you how to continue prepping this. All right, so we have that zipper, remember, folded in half with the right sides together. I've moved the zipper head out of the way so it's less bulk under the needle. And I am just going to make sure that those two zipper stops are lined up here. And my foot, I don't have a zipper foot on, but it is that really narrow foot that comes with the Baby Lock Accomplish. And so I'm just going to get as close to the zipper stop as I can and just sew straight across. So I'm just gonna make sure everything stays lined up. And I'll back stitch a little bit here at the beginning. Make sure this all stays where I want it. Back stitch across the middle just to give this some stability. This isn't going to take a lot of wear and tear with a little pouch like this. And then we'll back stitch again at the end and we can uh, cut our threads. And so then now let me show you what we're going to do next. So we're going to kind of finger press these ends of the zipper tape open. So I'm just gonna fold them back just like so. So you can see that they line up, but we don't want these flaps to get caught in the way of our zipper. And so I'm going to fold this back and make this little triangle just like so on all four sides. And then we're gonna come back and we're gonna do a straight stitch along this edge to hold those back out of the way. So let's do this side first. It'll just tuck right under the machine. You can also do all of this by hand if you'd rather. And so I'm just going to fold that here. If you have a stiletto, that might be handy. But really the point is you just wanna tuck the bulk of that out of the way of the zipper so that you're not fighting with it later. And so you can see how that looks once we've finished stitching it. So let's go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. Again, we're just gonna fold these back and then tuck this under. All right, so now we have both of those sewn and you can see how now the ends of the zipper are just completely tucked out of the way of the zipper teeth and we don't have to worry about those getting caught in the pouch when we get to that point. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim all of my little threads now while I have the chance so that those aren't in the way later. And now we can grab our needle and thread. Remember we're using that 28 weight. Um, and we're just going to run a running stitch. You can flip this right sides out just so it's not difficult later. And we're just gonna run a running stitch around both sides of our zipper tape. 
just like so. And you can see I'm just about an eighth of an inch in from the edge. It's pretty forgiving here. You just don't want to get too close to the zipper teeth. And we're just going to continue this running stitch all the way around the zipper. All right, we're coming to the end of our first side here. So I'm just going to put a few more stitches in. And then now we're going to just pull this slightly so it gathers up the side of our zipper. Not a lot. We just want this to naturally tuck in when we go to add this to our our little macaroon pouch later. And so you can see it's just kind of forcing those edges to curl under and that's what we're looking for. And so I'm now that I'm happy with that, I'm gonna knot this off and then we'll repeat the same thing on the other side and I'll meet you back here when that's done. Okay, so here is our completed zipper. You can see we have you know, finished off those inside edges and then we did the running stitch to just do some gathering around both sides. So now I'm just gonna set this aside now that we have it ready and let's finish prepping both our little lining pieces and our outside shapes of our little macaroon pouch. And so first up, I have that piece that we did for our lining. Remember, you're going to have two identical like this. And so much in the same way we did the running stitch around the zipper, we are going to do a running stitch around our lining. And this is part of the reason I liked that extra little bit of interfacing. It just gave me a bit more stability. And so we are just going to go all the way around this, one after the other. And you can see it's not perfect. I'm not worried about it. It's very forgiving. And so let's just keep stitching all the way around. If you've made yo-yos, this is really similar to that, except we don't have to turn a little hem, which is nice. And so we are just gonna keep going. And I will meet you back here when it's all done. All right, so I have those stitches done going all the way around. I have not tied it off yet. You'll notice how it's naturally starting to curl just from taking those stitches. And so I'm just gonna kind of hold this down against the mat and start tugging. And you'll notice how this is just gonna curl around that interfacing. So I'll just tug gently. This is why we're using that heavier weight thread. We don't want this to break, but that looks really nice. And so now I can tie this off here at the end. and use my snips. And then I do like to go ahead and just give this a little press just to make it lay nice and flat. And so there we go. Now we have one of our little lining circles. I have another one ready to go. So they're both uh, prepped and ready for us. So now let's move on to the outside of our little pouch. All right, so this is our outside circle. Remember, it's the larger of the two that you cut. I've already had that fusible fleece attached to it. And I went ahead and ran the running stitch all the way around. And so we can go ahead and start tugging on this. But what we're looking for here are those metal discs that were included in our kit. We're just gonna set this inside and make sure it's kind of centered. And we're going to tug this until it is around that metal disc. And so we're just gonna pull this tight, just like so, and that looks really nice. And so now once you have this, we are going to do basically a star stitch to hold this in place, because it does take a little bit of maneuvering. This is probably the trickiest part because you wanna hold that disc in there. And so I'm gonna take a little stitch through there where they meet up. And then we can sew across and back down. And we're just going to make sure that all of our sides are secure. So I've got this one. And then we're gonna go up this way and we're just making a star out of our threads. And it's just gonna hold this whole thing together. So again, we can come across, make sure you've got a good bite of that fabric. 
And then lastly, we'll come back and meet up on the other side where we started, just like so. And I can give that a good tug. And now that's really nice and secure. I don't have to fidget with it quite so much. And I can just put a knot in here to tie this off. All right. We'll go ahead and knot that twice just to make it nice and secure. All right, and we'll snip our thread. And now we can put all of our components together. All right, so one last time, let's just go over the components that we've put together. So here is our zipper. From this point forward, we're gonna go ahead and open this up because that's gonna make our lives much easier. So we'll have that open and ready to go. Here are our two outsides of our little macaroon pouch, and these are the two lining pieces. So first up, we are going to grab one of the outsides as well as our zipper, and we are just going to make sure that this is gonna kind of tuck inside. If you needed to change up what you've gathered, this would be the point that you could redo that on the zipper to make it tighter or looser, looser if you need to. This is totally good enough for me. And so now we are basically going to do the same sort of stitch that you would do for uh, binding to make this as invisible as possible. I do recommend you match your thread to your zipper color so that it will be nice and forgiving. And so we're just gonna start by coming through here and catching a little bit of our macaroon and our zipper. And then we're gonna come straight down from that and we're gonna go over about a quarter of an inch and we're gonna come back up, catch a little piece of that macaroon. There we go. And so we'll just continue. The goal that you have here is to leave about a quarter of an inch of your zipper tape showing. And so you just wanna keep watching that as you go around. So I'm just checking how much is showing through and pushing my needle up. And as I pull these, it just kind of disappears into the zipper tape and you can see how that works. So let's go ahead and we are going to sew both sides of these on and I'll meet you back here when that's done. So just for the sake of time, I have this other one that I've been working on that I went ahead and sewed both of them on. I've added one of the linings and let me show you how we add the other one. So you can see it's all stitched in place. And once you have it all attached, it's very forgiving because that thread just blends right in with your zipper, which is what you're looking for. And so now we're going to take our little lining circle and we're just going to nestle this inside here. And the exact same concept as we did with the outside with that little invisible stitch is what we're going to do here. And so I'm going to start with my knot under this yellow lining because I would like it to be as invisible as possible. And so I'm just gonna pop this up through so that the, net, the knot is now nestled underneath there. And we're just gonna go right back and across. So right on the edge, just like you're looking for when you're doing binding. So we'll take a stitch and then go straight back from where that so here's where the thread came out. We're going straight down over about an eighth to a quarter of an inch, coming up in that little edge of our lining and pulling that tight so our thread is invisible. And so we'll just continue that all the way around. And when you do that, it's gonna look like this. You can see how nicely that ends up. And then we can just close it up and it's finished. So let me show you this little one that is all done. So here is our finished little pouch. You can see I used the light purple in this one and it turns out so great and it comes together really quite quick, especially as you're sitting there. It's nice to have something that you just made while you're otherwise just watching TV. So I love projects like this. It's perfect to hold maybe some medicine, your little AirPods you can toss in there, or you know a pair of earrings you wanna keep safe, just anything little, but mostly look how stinking cute it is. How can you resist that, right? I hope you guys enjoy this. I hope you'll pick it up and give it a try, and I will see you next time on At Home.
Hey everyone, it's Misty. Thanks for watching at home. If you aren't already a part of our Missouri Star family, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell if you want a notification every time we release a new video. I'll see you next Monday on the newest episode of At Home.